my brothers and sisters today I only want to share with you a very simple hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this hadith will show us how we can earn more and more in terms of this worldly life what we can do in order to get more than what we have in this worldly material life so the hadith says ma min yawmin ma min yawmin yusbihu al-ibad fihi illa wa malakani yanzilan fayaqulu ahaduhuma allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa wa yaqulu al-akhar allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa the hadith says every day that the mu'mineen get up in the morning the worshippers the slaves of allah every day when they get up two angels come down the one angel says oh allah give the one who is spending give the one who is spending increase and the second angel says oh allah give the one who is miserly who is stingy destruction this is a hadith which has no doubt upon it it is a hadith sahih and it shows us that the angels pray for those who spend spend what in a charitable way no amount is mentioned because everyone has his own capacity if you have your savings are worth 100 US dollars and you have given one dollar it is one percent of your wealth and if your savings is 100 million you need to give one million to be equal to the one who spent one dollar so sometimes one man spends one one man spends one million but they are equal in the percentage they have spent so let us never underestimate no matter how poor you may be take out one dollar give it to someone allah will give you more why you fall under the dua of the angels oh allah give the one who spends increase let it become a lot for him so we learn that in islam we are taught that when you want to grow things firstly you seek from allah alone secondly you work hard you strategize you do your business in halal ways but working very hard laziness will not bring about sustenance you have to work hard and thirdly you need to spend from what allah gave you you need to spend from what allah gave you whatever allah gave you spend it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can spend and never ever shy away from the word spend when someone says give charity in your heart you must say inshallah i will give even if it means one I once saw a beggar who was given money and he took some out and gave another beggar. And I thought to myself, the one who gave him has a reward for everything because he facilitated that other charity as well. And I did not see or wait to see that other one, the other one who now received also giving. Subhanallah. So if someone gave you a dollar and you give 10 cents to someone else, Wallahi, you have given 10% of what you have. 10% is very big. I know a brother who made a promise unto Allah that I will give charities fi sabilillah 1% of my turnover, over and above zakah. You see zakah, zakah, you get a reward to fulfill it definitely because it's farad but zakah is a test from allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says to you that for every hundred dollars you make 
only 97.5 belongs to you. 2.5 belongs to me. So all you are doing is taking the change and giving it to him. How much was his? 2.5. So when you have 100, you, you, the change is you are holding it for who? For Allah. It's not yours. That money is not yours. That's why it is dirty for you, but clean for someone else. So you are holding the change for Allah. You have to spend it for Allah. So Allah says, gave you a hundred. The change is 2.5. He is waiting for his change. He is waiting. He will wait for one year. That's change. Give him back. If not, he will slap you. You will spend that money somehow in another way. Some damage will happen. The money will be gone, wasted for something. Why did this happen? Because that money was not yours. Allah wanted to take it out of your system somehow. Remember this. So to give zakah, you're getting a reward, but your iman will make you give it naturally, automatically. The only problem is Allah tests you by making the figure go bigger. When you were small, it was $250. When you grew bigger, it became $25 million. You follow what I say? As you grow, you don't need the money you have, but you become more stingy and you become more clingy to your wealth. Some of the poorer people, they are more generous percentage wise. They are more generous than some of the wealthy. It's Allah. So this man says, I will give 1% of my turnover. Listen to what I'm saying. And he says, from that day, my business grew so big that one of the scholars told me, if you make that promise to Allah that I will give 1% of my turnover, then he says, I have seen that most of the people, their wealth grows so much that shaitan comes to them because the figure of 1% is now too big. That's a test. It's nothing from the hadith that you have to give 1%. No, this is extra over his own charity. Because you are like yesterday, we said that if you want to know who you are, what do you look at? The lowest people, your treatment of them, you know who you are. And if you want to know how generous you are, besides zakat, what do you give? That's it. Zakat does not tell you how generous you are because it's not yours. Generosity is known not by zakat. Zakat is malullah. It's the ownership of Allah. But generosity is known by what you do from your own heart without an instruction. You follow what I'm saying? There's no instruction. No, this is mine. I've given my zakat. I have the right to use this, but I still want to give. When I sit and watch people of other religions, sometimes they give 10% of their salary to the priest. One time, 10% of the salary to the church, not 1% of turnover. 10 they give happily, happily. Allah says you don't need to pay your priests, your charities. Look after your priests. I promise you. The ulama of this ummah, look after them. The reason I say this is through their teachings, you will learn to enter Jannah, make life easy for them so that they can dedicate. Many of the ulama across the world, financially they are struggling. Wallahi, they cannot afford much. They have children, they cannot send to the schools, whatever. Where are we? Can we not decide that these ulama, they are more important in our lives than the medical doctor? Wallahi, they are a spiritual doctor. Their salaries should be in line with the doctor. If that is the case, all our children will want to be ulama. The problem with us when it comes to religion, Wallahi, shaitan comes to us to say, listen, don't give. Then that sheikh, he needs to earn. So while he's teaching, maybe in the afternoon, he does a business, he does something else. People are saying, this man is now doing business. What's wrong? He's a human being. He needs to survive. Are you going to take care of his needs? So learn to be charitable. If the answer is yes, I'm sure 20 people can get together, put a hundred dollars each, give him 2000 US. What will happen? Be happy when you see the sheikh driving a nice car. When we see sheikhs driving nice cars, what happens to us? 
we want to comment bad comments when we see a sheikh smelling good nice pen nice watch two wives three wives we start saying ah this sheikh what is he doing obviously this is an example here we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can respect the ulama look after them don't be shy look after them spread it across to say we look after the ulama because the deen is preserved they need to work tirelessly they don't have the time they also have needs so this is part of spending the generosity of a nation is known by what they spend over and above the zakat inshallah the same applies to poor people when we see them we, we give them but uh, a true generous person is one who empowers them one who thinks long term about them every day you are seeing someone uh, think about how is it that you can now get this person off the street and off begging you understand yes. you might not come up with a solution but the thought that you have the feeling that you have is what made you a better person I have a feeling I couldn't do much about it but I make dua, oh Allah, help these people. They are on the street begging. Every day I see this man. At least me, I'm not begging. I thank you, oh Allah. I try to help them, but help them, help me to come up with ideas that we can assist these people. They can earn also. And how many stories do we have of riches to rags? I'm sure there are plenty. I've seen in my life, Allah. And how many we have of people who had nothing yesterday and today they are so wealthy, you can't even believe it. It's Allah. Allah has a plan that wealth will not remain in the same hands. It must change hands. It belongs to all the people. We give turns to people to own in order to test them. When you have it, what are you going to do? That's all. So my brothers and sisters, when we have, we will give. We will have more by Allah. We will have more by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who are included in the dua of the angels, whereby every single morning, the angel says, O oh Allah, grant increase to the one who is spending. May we not be from among those whom, the, when the angel says, O oh Allah, grant those who are stingy, miserly, destruction. We don't want to be from among those, inshallah. May Allah bless us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Iqra' kitab Allah tarq jinanahu wa tanal azim al-ajr wal-ghufrani Rattilhu rawi al-qalb min nafahatih kalmai yurui lahfata al-achani